Hello and welcome to a brand new video tutorial from me, Jessica. And um, I had the request from a couple of people in SB118 um, on how to do badges and logos. Well, I have usually a template that I can show you here. Like this is the last one I made. Um, that has everything in it that I already need. I can just put in the picture, change the writing, and then I'm done. But that won't help you at all. <laughs> so I'm going to show you how to make something like this. It might be that it's a bit different because I take um, this template from Marisa. And um, since we're going to do something from scratch, we will see how that works. <coughs> now, um, I will show you how to do these circles, the writing, the everything in this tutorial. Now um, we start with an empty 550 by 550 I think. Yes, um, it's nice and big so you can see details and you can easily scale it down afterwards but it needs to be square because the logo and the, or the badge is perfectly round. So the first thing you see here in this example are these blue lines. These are guides that will help you to perfectly center this and it's easy to do this. We go here to view and new guide and then I will put in 50% um, you see that there is a zero centimeter right now but you don't always know how to math in your brain. I know I don't, so I don't really want to divide and go by pixel or centimeter or something, so I do 50% for vertical, that is perfectly in the middle of uh, this graphic, and then I'm another new guide, horizontal 50%. And there we go, this is the perfect middle. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So this is where we will start and I will lock these guides so I don't accidentally move them around so now you can see I can't even grab them anymore because I know myself and I will possibly move them around a lot by accident. So the first thing we need is a big black circle. So we go, um, there are several ways to do this. I'm pretty sure there are people who do this with a brush. I just show you how to do this. So just take a nice big brush here and go to the middle and then press. Okay, now I have the flow down at 46. Let me redo that. Um, put the flow up to 100. Go to the middle and find the middle. Okay, and this, this, and patch. Now I apparently have messed this up quite a bit. Extra pixels there. Um, this is a way to do it, but I don't like it. So let me delete this. We use these little thingies here. They are shapes. We go through the ellipse tool and take a shape. Then we go to the middle again and I think, yes, hold down shift and pull the size we want. There we go. Now we can go to parts here and oh, actually we don't have to because I used the shape. If you use, wait a second, let me show you, if you use path and do the same thing, you go to the middle, hold shift and drag the circle, then you only have this path here. We will need this later, so remember this, and can go to path here, and the first button here is fill, so we can do this. This way we have a nice round circle. We go to the next layer. This is, um, we will reuse this shape because as you see here, we have this nice golden corner here, um, not corner, edge. So we are going to add 
this corner now. I always say corner, no? No, it's an edge. So we take a nice goldenish color. Use the edge path <laughs> here and the second button here is fill. Now um, you can do the fill also by activating the pen tool and go right click here and stroke path. As you can see here I often use the simulate pressure tool that will actually help you to make it look like you stop and start with your brush like when you use it in real life um, but we don't want to see we want a steady edge that is the same thickness as every part no of course that didn't work because the brush was too big now let's bring us down here to maybe yeah say about six or seven pixel and then we will do that again and there we have our edge uh, <coughs> now this is of course not everything we need the second edge here and we need to make sure that we can color this little border that will be here a different way than the big circle in the middle. Um, actually I think this is too thick. Let me bring this down to 5 and go to path and stroke. That's better, yes. Okay, now we take our new layer here, take the very same path and go to image, um, no, we go to edit and scale. Now when we just scale it now it can distort and we don't want that. So let's go back here. We want it to be the same as the outer part but in the middle so we don't want to have it offset and we want to make sure that the center stays in the center. So we press shift and alt and then drag it down. That means basically that we not only keep the proportions with the shift, but size around center, which is at. So we confirm this and stroke again. There we go. We have now two layers. This is outer edge and this is inner edge and the other one is base. So we are done with the path. So I usually um, keep this here but I just click below to deselect the path so I'm not working with it by accident. Now we want to have something like the base so let's copy this again and name this you know so I just call it now I often don't rename and I will always regret this so I have disabled the base part so we can see when the inner part stops and ends so now we go back to edit transform scale or we go to tree transform form whichever is easier since we don't do anything but scale we just use scale again hold down shift and alt and bring this down so it vanishes under this golden edge here. There we go. Now we have an inner and a base. Now you see the difference that this is rather flat here and this is a little bit more 3D. So we go to the inner edge first. I have an action for this. I'm going to use this right now and this one too. I'm going to show you what this does. It goes to the layer style. You can reach this by right click blending options 
I'm not sure why it's called blending options here and layer style there, but that's what we do. Then go to bevel and emboss, and you can play around with these settings here, and you see in the picture how they change. That's changing the size of the bevel. This is softening or hardening it. Actually, like it this way a bit more. You can change the direction the light is coming from, which also changes a bit in these settings here. You just use it like this. I save it as a new style, so I can just apply it to the outer rim, and we don't have to do this again. So, once you're happy with your settings, go here to New Style and save it. And then we go to the other edge and click and have it applied. Easy as that. Now the next thing I want to show you is that we use this path again. We go to transform scale and scale it up a little bit. And this is what we will use for our writing. Yeah, there are several ways to do the writing in these. Um, one way I will show you is to simply write your text. For example, go here in the middle, then write USS Honey Pot. That's the one we are going to do now. I have to bring this way down because the writing is way too big. Um, it's still too big, so let's bring us down to 4. It is centered, and we start in the center here. Then there's this trick here to go to the Warp Text button. It's in your Text Tools, right here at the top. And go to Arc. Now what this does is, it arcs your writing, of course. The problem with this is, as you can see, it also distorts your writing. So when you do this, and especially when you have something longer, like for example, is awesome, you have to adjust it all over again, and we don't want that. So that is why we don't use this tool. What we're going to use is the path tool. Zoom in a bit closer here, and you can see that when you have the writing tool activated, that your cursor here changes a bit the cursor with this little squiggly line. That means you're going to use the path. So we go into here and going to write on it again. And you see it follows the path perfectly. Now when you make it smaller, because you want it to fit everything, it will still follow the path. You don't have to redo anything. Um, let me check if the writing is complete. Yes, because Cedar Bright is the writing I use here. And when you think that your path here is wrong, you can go in and correct this. You can make it smaller. You can make it bigger, and when you click, yep, the writing follows. So, um, I'm bringing this down a bit more again. So, this is the USS Honeypot. I use the same layer style as we used on the circles here. You can, of course, go back in to your bevel and emboss. You can change the depth of it, you can adjust it just the way you want it to make it just the way you like it. Now we know that usually when we have ships we also have a writing down here that is NCC and this big number. So if we try that now, wait a second, I have to go to the path again. If we try this now you see, the big problem is 
that the number is on its head. It's upside down. So we can't use the same path to do both. There is a trick to do this. We just need a new layer. Um, we use this work path here. Make a new path. That I just took this one here and dragged it down to new layer, so we have a new path. Then we go down here. Oh, wait a second. Go down here and right our thing. It's still on its head. No worries. We were going to change that. A honey pot is a one, two, three, four, five point D. So um, that is the writing we have. Now we go down to this path, and I wish I would remember the key. And I have found it, <coughs> part for that. You have to go to this nice path selection tool at the side here. And I will show you now, when we go closer here, you see this nice cursor changes into something with two arrows. So we are clicking here and we can move, drag it around. That is not what we want. We pull it to the top. There we go. See this. This is what we want. And we go out again here and going to drag this back into the center where it belongs. And then we do the same nice trick that we did before. We go to Edit, Scale, and now we are going to scale this again with Alt and Shift to fit here. There we go. Isn't that nice? I actually can state it so that it goes at the top of the high letters of the USS Honeypot so it would work with the rest too. Now we use the bevel and emboss thing again here and there we go. Now you see something is missing. These parts at the side here. Um, these are the Starfleet emblems here. I'm going to post your link to where to get them. I'm going to right click duplicate and tutorial batch. There it is. And since we have these nice guides here it will help you to where the middle is. Then um, I press Ctrl and T which is the same as going here into free transform under edit and do the same shift alt for resizing this then I'm going to take this and drag it down to the new layer to make a copy then I'm holding down shift and use my cursor key to move it to the other side this way I'm not accidentally moving it up or down while I try to move it over there so that helps a lot now we see that this yellow goldish here is very different than the ones we have here. So we go into this writing mode here and we can play around with the color a bit to see if that would work better. Maybe go a bit more into the yellowish. No. Uh, this is actually nice, just a hint different. And we go there and copy the code we have from the other here. I still like this. Okay, so now we have this part, <coughs> but we know that badges always have a nice picture in the middle. Um, let me find 
the stop background that I use in many, many. Oops, that was an error. I don't know what. What I don't care. Um, graphic resources. I hard drive is a huge graphic mess. I have made a couple of space picture things. So I'm going to use the space background from one of them. Let me use this one here. And now we go to the inner. Make a new layer. Hold down Alt and make it clip to the inner. So that means only the inner part will be textured with it. You can of course instead of using the Alt key go to this layer, right click and create clipping mask. That's basically the same. Now I'm inserting this image here. I don't want to plan it in it, I only want the stars. So we have the stars here. I would like to make this a little bit more poppy. So we go to levels, make it another clipping mask to the star image. And there. Brighten up the stars a bit. This is before, this is after. I like that. And then next to the star image, because this is rather boring, I'm using the honey pot here. This is, I think, Winnie the Pooh. I'm not sure. Basically, it's a bear and he wants the honey. So, duplicate the layer, bring this to the tutorial batch. You can also just control A and C for control A is select everything all and control C for copy and then go in here and control V but I usually go the duplicate round. Make this a clipping mask to the planet stuff. Then we go back to edit, transform scale. Now I have to zoom out a bit because the image is rather big. And then hold down Shift and Alt and scale this down. Now the reason I used these stars is to show you another thing. Right now you don't see the stars here because the background is rather black. Let me adjust this a bit. Then I'm going to screen and then we have a nice blend because a screen makes the black parts go away. So this is the USS Honeypot batch. Actual size is this. And one thing I really like to do lately is I'm going to duplicate the star layer here. Let me create the clipping masks again and go to the base and use it on that as well. So I'm going to turn down the opacity a bit, but it gives you a nice hint of stars on this outer circle as well and it is still covered by the golden rings because they are on top here. So this is how I make batches for ships and teams and other stuff and you can try around, play around with it a bit, make it your own. Like for example this is there much better was a pixel too far to the left and I'm happy with that now. Same goes for this down here. There we go. And that's the whole trick. So if you need it, keep re watching this, try it yourself, follow it and I'm pretty sure that you can come up with a lot of great badges in your own colored schemes, in your own pictures, with your own little tricks and I hope this was helpful to you and have fun with your badges and stay creative.